Operation would create a crisis, present himself as the savior, and use the gambit to win re-election. Milley knew the Chinese assertion that the U.S. was planning a secret strike was preposterous. He had then called General Li on the same back channel to persuade the Chinese to cool down. He invoked their long-standing relationship and insisted the U.S. was not planning an attack. At the time, he believed he had been successful in placating Li, who would pass the message to Chinese President Xi Jinping. But now, two months later, on January 8th, it was evident China's fears had only been intensified by the insurrection. We don't understand the Chinese, Milley told senior staff, and the Chinese don't understand us. That was dangerous in itself. But there was more. Milley had witnessed up close how Trump was routinely impulsive and unpredictable. Making matters even more dire, Milley was certain Trump had gone into a serious mental decline in the aftermath of the election, with Trump now all but manic, screaming at officials and constructing his own alternate reality about endless election conspiracies. The scenes of a screaming Trump in the Oval Office resembled Full Metal Jacket, the 1987 movie featuring a Marine gunnery sergeant who viciously rages at recruits with dehumanizing obscenities. You never know what a president's trigger point is, Milley told senior staff. When might events and pressures come together to cause a president to order military action? In making the president the commander-in-chief of the military a tremendous concentration of power in one person, the Constitution gave the president the authority single-handedly to employ the armed forces as he chose. Milley believed that Trump did not want a war, but he certainly was willing to launch military strikes, as he had done in Iran, Somalia, Yemen, and Syria. I continually reminded him, Milley said, depending on where and what you strike, you could find yourself in a war. While the public's attention was on the domestic political fallout from the Capitol riot, Milley privately recognized the U.S. had been thrust into a new period of extraordinary risk internationally. It was precisely the kind of hair-trigger environment where an accident or misinterpretation could escalate catastrophically. It was all unfolding fast and out of public view, which in some ways resembled the tensions during the Cuban Missile Crisis of October 1962 when the U.S. and the Soviet Union almost went to war. Milley, 62, a former Princeton hockey player, burly and ramrod straight at five foot nine, did not know what China would do next. But he did know, after 39 years in the Army and many bloody combat tours, that an adversary was the most dangerous when they were frightened and believed they might be attacked. If an adversary like China ever desired, he said, they could choose to do what's called a first-move advantage or a Pearl Harbor and conduct a strike. The Chinese were investing in a sweeping expansion of their military to almost superpower status. Just 16 months earlier, at a stunning military parade in Tiananmen Square in Beijing, President Xi the most powerful Chinese leader since Mao Zedong, had said, there is no force that can stop the Chinese people and the Chinese nation forging ahead. The Chinese also revealed their latest game-changing weapon, a hypersonic missile that could travel at five times the speed of sound. Milley told senior staff, there are capabilities in cyber or in space where you could do some really significant damage to a large, industrial, complex society like the United States, and you could do that very, very quickly through some very powerful tools that are out there. China is building all of these capabilities. China was also aggressively staging war games and sending military planes daily toward the island of Taiwan, the independent offshore nation that China considered theirs and the U.S. had pledged to protect. The previous year, General Li had announced that China would resolutely smash Taiwan if necessary. Taiwan alone was a powder keg. In the South China Sea, China was on the march like never before.